it's been a rough week for young, talented pitchers in the major leagues because if you're one of those, there's a good chance you came up injured this week. Every time I watch a guy come off the mound, and we were watching uh, a pitcher for the Reds who came out through one pitch in the game today and then walked off the mound, they're like, ooh, that's not good. Anytime that happens, you're thinking he uh, might not be might, back for a year and a half. That might be Tommy John. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, we were talking last year about Yuri Perez, how the Marlins were protecting him. They sent him to the minor leagues when they needed him to pitch. And, and he didn't... came back, and then he pitched for them, but he was kind of not the same at the end of the season. And now he's got Tommy John. He's gone until 2025. And not even just 2025. It's like June of 2025. So, uh, and, and you mentioned Shane Bieber, uh, you know, the first two starts for Bieber. Were, 20, 20 strikeouts in his first two starts. And people were saying, you know, he didn't get signed or, or, you know, by a uh, traded, I should say, over the, over the winter because people were a little uncertain about his health and was he going to come back. And then he has these two starts and he's like amazing. And like all the teams are going, oh, why didn't we go and trade for that guy? Oh, that's why. So, uh, yeah. Um, and Spencer Strider. You know, um, he of the finest mustache in, in, in the major leagues. Right. Uh, and the finest fastball, possibly, or uh, well, one of them. One know, of them. He there. has ulnar damage in his... Yeah, UCL. Um, and uh, they haven't really given him... It looks like he's going to have Tommy John, though. But they haven't They haven't said yet what his, his thing. And Garrett Cole, I think, was only resuming throwing today. And so he's still going to be a while away because he missed all of spring training, pretty much. So he's going to be a while before he's... At least back. June, they're saying, before him. Wow, it's all the way out to June now. I think so. I think it's June. Whoa. So, uh, and, you know, we, we were going to do a different episode this week, and then all these injuries happen. Um, and our friend Kelly, Franco uh, Troop, also put it out there that, you know, is is this velocity chase that pitchers have been doing um, that's resulting in a cascade, as she called it, of, uh, of Tommy John's, does it take a, an entire generation to fix it? Well, I don't, I don't know that it, it's, it's a generation-by-generation generation thing necessarily, but definitely pitchers are, are feeling the need to throw harder and harder because if they don't, they don't get guys right, out. Right, I think what it is is that in your in guys' quest to throw harder and harder, to hit higher and higher spin rates, they're injuring their arms more as a natural byproduct of it. I mean, you can look at that pretty much the, the average fastball hovered around 93 miles an hour for pre, like in, you know. That used to be a around. pretty fast fastball. Right, that was a standard fastball. Then since 2008, the average velocity for all pitch types, not just fastballs, is up two miles an hour. So the average fastball is now 95. That's a big difference. I remember in the early 90s when if you threw 95 consistently, you were like a fireballer. And I think, um, you know, because you were a guy that was known for throwing hard. And, and, and so what's happening also is guys that had velocity, they're finding ways to increase their velocity because they're doing all these um, pitch camp, you know, not the pitch camp things, but the, the, the pitching, um, what do the Mets have? Uh, well, they're, they're uh, doing arm strengthening exercises and pitching and pitching work to try and deliberately increase the velocity that they're throwing at. And so they have a, a, a whole testing modicum. They, they, they're wiring the guys up, trying to see where your efficiencies lie, what you can do to increase to make your best self go mm -hmm. out All the analytics there. and the data and then the science that they're putting into it is going to give you an insight in how you can tweak your body but i mean i, I don't think i necessarily agree with what ozzy Guillen said you know back when he was playing <laughs> they had guys drinking 12 budweiser's and eating three cheeseburgers going out there and playing and you can't pull fat I don't think it's necessarily guys that were pull a muscle. You can pull. You can't you pull, pull fat. fat right. <laughs> That's but funny. But I think one, plenty of us out there can basically say, yeah, you could definitely pull fat. And secondly, I don't think it's that the guys were necessarily out of shape in that pre presented them, but I don't think they were going max effort on every single play in the same way that today's players are. Not that the players of you know the past weren't trying hard, but I think the exertion they're putting out on a play-by-play -play basis. If you're a pitcher, you have to throw max effort on every pitch, whereas before, pacing yourself was a real part of being a starting pitcher. And I think the guys that were that are throwing in the higher 90s or, or upper to, uh, upper 90s that were throwing maybe 93, 94, and they found a couple of extra miles an hour and all that. Well, not everybody's body is designed to throw 97 miles an hour, but we all think that everybody has to throw that in order to be successful. Right, right. Nolan Ryan could throw 99 miles an hour probably today at his advanced <laughs> I know. age. I think he could throw 90 today, and I think he's like 75 right, years old. Exactly. So. <laughs> so, so, but we can't use him as the barometer being right. like, well, he was fine throwing that many innings at that speed for his entire life. Yeah, but like, not everybody is Nolan Ryan, so we can't use the greats and their ability to do some of these things as a reason why all players should be able to do them. 
And uh, we, we um, were watching the return of Edwin Diaz for the Mets, uh, watching him. And I noticed uh, when we were, we were watching him pitch that he's not throwing the 100 and 101 that he was throwing when he threw for the Mets a couple of years ago. His fastball, he's gotten up to 99 in one of the outings, but 95, 96. Um, and he's got a devastating slider. And I'm wondering if it was a knee injury, is it, is it that he's just not fully loose yet or is he actually holding back well, and not is- trying to throw 100 miles an hour because 95 is great for him with the slider he's got, he's going to be just fine. And maybe he only needs to dial it up once in a while. And we're going to have to see that, I think, over over time with him, whether or not he'll increase and ramp up throughout this season. Will Jacob deGrom come back when he when he finally returns? And will he go back to throwing 101, 102 as regularly as he did when he was pitching for the Mets? And when you think back on that, you're thinking, it seemed crazy then right. to, to watch him do that. And based upon the injuries, it Clear, was crazy. Right. Clearly, <laughs> he could not sustain throwing the ball like that as, as marvelous as the results were and i think the difficult thing for pitchers is what do you do if you're a starting pitcher if the only way right now we're able to get these guys out is like pitching this it's not like you can tell these guys well just don't pitch max effort and accept having getting hit way more often you know and you're gonna have a four or five era well that that doesn't get you paid you know what gets you paid, especially as a young pitcher, throwing 94, 95. Well, and that's the that's the comment Ron Darling was making uh, about you know if and, and this, he's not the only one to make it. Everybody's saying if you want to be noticed as a 15, 16 year old pitcher, if you're throwing 92 or 93, you're getting noticed all of a sudden right, because right. they know they can squeeze a few more miles and out of, out of you. And I think the scary thing is, is I think one of the doctors that was one of the main uh, surgeons for Tommy John was talking about how originally. When it was people getting Tommy uh, John surgery, it was uh, Doctor James Andrews. James yes. Andrews, right? It was the major leaguers, then the minor leaguers, then the college players, and then like the the youth that was playing the game. And now that's the inverse. Now it's the youngest players, the people still in high school and, and the amateurs and the college players that are getting the majority of the Tommy John surgery. And we should not have athletes and parents looking at Tommy John surgery as saying, "Well, it's actually better for me financially to get it at 16." Because if I do, and then I have already had it, I'm not going to potentially need to get it when I'm looking to get my first contract. And here's why I, I think that this should be dispelled completely. Um, because pitchers are getting more than one Tommy John, right? right. I, there was a time where I thought, like, you got Tommy John one time. And then you were done. That was it. You're not going to have it anymore. You don't have the ligament there anymore, and you can't do that. But, but that's not the case. Right. You're getting it a second time now. And if that's the case, we clearly have a problem. And it's one I don't think baseball has an easy solution for. Because... The, the, what you're running into is pitchers are running up against the limits of the human body. So unless suddenly baseball fans are okay with a great starting pitcher having an ERA of 4.5, which that's going to require a massive cultural shift. Yeah, yeah, not not I don't likely. Think it's gonna, not going to be likely if you're going to be like, oh yeah, well he only gave up five earned runs last. He gave up five earned runs last start. That was a great start. I mean, you're going to run into that problem. If, if it's not that. We're going to have to do something to somehow give the pitchers an advantage back so that they do not need to be throwing and straining their arms like this just to be capable of getting major league hitters out consistently. Well, I know you have kind of an interesting uh, uh, thought about that, but let's let's hold that for right well, now. For right now. And let's, let's talk about some of the pitchers because when I went through the, the list uh, and MLB came out with a, um, a report or, or a bleach report that I should say uh, late last year of all the pitchers that have had Tommy John. Um, and, and the 15th guy, a guy named Dre Jameson for the Diamond, Backs, I'm not really familiar with, but, but that's apparently like, he had great starts at the end of 2022, and he's got he didn't pitch last year. Right, so he's going to be coming back early this year. But I, if I told you Shane Boz, who yeah. everybody knows for Tampa, Dustin May, yeah, we talked about he's he's still got it. Luis Garcia of the Astros, Jeffrey Springs went down last year early in the year after he got off to a great start. Tony Gonsolin of the Dodgers, two Dodger pitchers, two Dodger pitchers. Uh, Tyler Molly, who uh, you know I think is pitching now, or, he's or, just, or, come just coming back. Back now, uh, you know uh, Marquez of the Rockies, Herman Marquez. Marquez. These are really quality. How about Walker Bueller, another Good. Dodger? Uh, and by the way, Kershaw isn't out with the. It doesn't have Tommy John, but he's out with an injury as well. That's more overused. Liam Hendricks um, right. is another guy. Shane McClanahan, another star pitcher right, for the right. Rays, it, it went it down with to Tommy be specifically John. Specifically affecting star pitchers because you have like Robbie Ray over in Seattle. Another who's saw one young guys. winner. You know he's down. Felix Batista, right? The Orioles. Were, they needed him so much last year, and he's not going to pitch. He may not pitch this year. Right, and even if he does come back, how much 
much are you going to be able to rely on a guy that hasn't pitched in a year and a half? How about uh, f- former Cy Young winner Sandy Alcantara? Another he, blow to the Marlins. He's got, oh, we'll talk about them. Uh, and, and obviously Jacob deGrom. So you've got all these pitchers that are all on Tommy John, plus the guys we just talked about right, who, right. who just got it this week. And clearly what you're seeing is, you know what a lot of those guys all were? were they were Cy Young winners, which means they had big seasons where they pitched a lot. Through lots of innings. Through lots of innings, and then they need Tommy John. So we're clearly starting to see a correlation between that. And, and I do agree with the MLB that the players associate, players union trying to suggest that the pitch clock was somehow responsible for the increase in, in Tommy John seems a bit... Well, and, and it's funny that you say that because I think last year when the pitch clock um, was being used, I, I suggested going, gee, I wonder how that's going to impact the pitchers with that shorter, more pitches over a shorter period. Will that result in injuries or not being able to go as deep in the game? Right, I think, that was more what, what you were concerned about. What I, what I was about. thinking. And there was a study out of Johns Hopkins uh, that basically dispelled that, saying there's no correlation that they were able to come up with that said that the pitch clock was, a, was led to right. those injuries. Especially because you have to look at things. There were probably guys that were already operating inside what the current pitch clock is we just didn't know it because there wasn't a pitch clock tracking that so like you didn't realize oh well if a guy was already normally pitching with 15 seconds and then he needed tommy john surgery the pitch clock didn't make him get tommy john and and we're coming up this year um in september on the 50th anniversary of the first tommy john surgery and that was performed on tommy john shocking um, by by uh, dr frank job um, of Los Angeles, who was the predecessor of James Andrews. Like people, there's a couple of other surgeons that people travel to when they go and have this surgery that are known for being really good at it. Now, I think in addition to velocity, I, I think one of the things is that, that we've really focused on here is how guys chasing velocity. I do think the increase in specifically the s- slider being used over the curveball also has increased the usage. In, in the Tommy John surgery, because I think that pitch is much harder on your arm than the traditional curveball, interestingly enough, because of the, vo- the violence in throwing the slider. I, I think that it is a more violent pitch, and, and I'm very disappointed because when I made my Frank Joe comment, I wanted to I always wanted to say the same thing. So when Tim McCarver was calling games, he, he said that with the pitchers that went to this, this surgeon were the patients of Job. Yeah, I know. I just... I just can't. I just had to. I had to call out. The, shout out to Tim McCarver. Um, yeah, you, you, you just had to slip it in there. You got to make sure, make sure to get so, that call so, out. So right, that that is a very the slider no, no, is no. a super hard pitch on the elbow. The curveball is known to be a tough pitch on the elbow. Um, so that's why things like the split finger for a while it seemed to be easier to throw, and it was more about the grip well, than it, the motion. It, I think one of the, the, the one of the stress. things that we didn't look into, but I would want to look into, is what are the rate of pitchers in the KBO and the NBP that need Tommy John because they don't throw nearly the same degree of sliders they're much more focused on throwing the split finger so i'm curious to see if them not throwing that so that kind of pitch that's a great much, point and, and if they don't need to get the tommy john surgery and they're not the they're degree. definitely not chasing velocity the way that the major league baseball pitchers chase velocity i also don't know if they are uh, as hounded uh, hounds on video review and trying right. to look at stuff the way that now the technology well, uh, i know, think certainly they're not the velocity game. hounds a guy comes along like a roki sasaki or a yama Moto that throws incredibly hard every once in a while, but they're not trying to train pitchers into doing that. They want them to be pitchers more. I get the impression at least. Well, and, and I think that that fans would want would be happy with that too. I mean, it's exciting to watch a pitcher go out there and throw a hundred and two mile an hour fastball past somebody, and you see the the, the number the come pop. up on the scoreboard, and you hear the pop, and you get all excited. But you also know that you, how long can he sustain that? Right, kind of right, exactly. And, and we've seen so many guys closers come up, and how many guys have we seen in the setup roles or the re, the reliever roles? They come in in the seventh, they throw a hundred and two, but they're only on the team for a year or two before they flame out, and we never see or hear from them again. It's going going back into time um, a little bit I, I thought it was interesting i saw that the number of pitches thrown at 100 miles an hour or higher each season uh, increased from 147 in 2008 to 1320 in 2017 so in just 11 years right so i think years. that's why it's become a much more prevalent problem in this short time frame is you can clearly see the increase in velocity and guys trying to hit these unbelievable speeds is leading to strain on the arm that the arm can't take. And, and it's interesting to uh, look at, uh, they, they came up with a list of, of some pitchers. Uh, some of them I know more than I do others, but how much their velocity increased from 2023 so far in 2024. Mm-hmm. And then they've, they've added two and a half, like I was saying, two and a half miles an hour as much uh, on their fastball. Um, and you just think, okay, that's, 
are they going to pay a price for that? Right, right, right. But now I also look at a guy like Tarek Skubal, who was he had previously was throwing, you know, he was up to almost n- ninety six, right, and now now he's up to ninety seven point five. And so that's a big increase. He's throwing almost two miles an hour harder. He's almost up to 90. Career high. Career high. Can he do that for a full season? Or are you going to slow his, see him kind of trend back a little bit towards the 95 mark? And he just came out of the gate super hot. And I don't know the answer to this question, but I've wondered it a number of times. So why is it that we expect left-handers not to throw quite as hard as right-handers? Like the, the idea of us now, it's as much as you see them more when it comes to the soft-throwing left-hander, that's something you may not see very much. But the only left-hander that I can, you know, obviously I Randy think because Johnson there have and guys always like that, been so a lot of guys that left-handed aren't. pitchers teams were more willing to accept left-handed pitch like they would they would take a guy that was a crafty you would be much more willing as an organization to take on what was a crafty lefty over a crafty righty because you would much rather take a shot on and there's more left-handed hitters right. so you know you, you, you i understand that but you like there, there aren't that many left-handed studs any any more or ever that are like 99 100 mile an hour pitches regularly they, we, we see them with right-handers I, well, I think i honestly would love to talk about the biomechanics of both hitting and pitching and whether or not being right-handed or left-handed has some kind of effect on that okay. based on the way you wouldn't think it would but the fact that left-handers have different natural hitting spots, it seems like, than right-handed hitters do. And left-handed pitchers can't ever seem to throw quite as hard as right-handed hitters do. Maybe there's something about where they're facing on the mound and how it works that you just you would never know that unless you study the science. I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting thought. And, and, and left-handers have increased their velocity as well. The oh, av- certainly. The average speed for left-handed pitchers in 2021 was 92.2, which is much faster. I think it was under 90. Right. Uh, you know, before that. And and basically, um, you know, there are so many pitchers that throw now over, you know, 100 miles an hour that it's just normal. I mean, I mean, think about when you look at any of your team's bullpen, how many guys come in that just throw 97 or faster? It's like every guy pretty much. Maybe you have like one or two guys in there. And especially if you're not counting the lefty one out guy, like or well, I guess the lefty three out guy. <laughs> right. Um, if you're not counting that lefty, everybody throws like 98. Here you go. Among pitchers that threw 100 more pitches in 2008, I'm going back to the same uh, the original look mm-hmm. uh, that year, those that sat 92 miles an hour threw harder than 58%, okay, more than half of the MLB pitchers. Mm-hmm. In 2023, just last season, the pitchers that sat at 92 threw harder than 17.8% in the that, pitchers. That's, a, that's stunning. A generational <laughs> shift. Think about it. Within 20 years, that's a massive change in how hard everybody throws. So, um, you know, we, we did our, uh, I'm thinking of the book, The Fireballer, when we had Mark Stevens on, mm-hmm. and this is a guy who, you know, supposedly threw 109, 110 miles an hour, um, and he, you know, we won't give away the book, but, you know, we didn't get to see in, in the story, because the story sort of ended before, you know, late, later on, just see, did he, did he, did he, just how good was he? Wait, or could he pitch at that level for, you know, five whole, seasons right, or ten right. seasons? Could he, could he keep it up? Or, or maybe his arm would fall off because he threw so hard. Um, but it made me think about, okay, so how are we going to, deal with these younger players throwing so hard and do you need to put limits on them right because the problem is at the at the youth level is that these guys are chasing velocity because they're thinking that this is their ticket to to riches and 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 they're and taking care of their families right. and, and, and the all the problem this. is everybody at every level has an interest in them continuing to throw as hard as they can because it benefits everybody around them the only thing the only party in this that isn't benefited is the pitcher's body thank you you know and 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 when we when we well we talked about frank Ryder, the character and and, and they had a I, I thought at major league baseball that they need to limit his velocity so if he throws it higher than 108 or 106 they're going to make it a ball so forget about that because that's you know that's an interesting premise in a book but what if you had radar guns at high school games does everybody have to have a radar gun and if the kid throws over 90 or 92 or whatever number they come up with that it's a ball. So it yeah, sent the kids it to feels not like you're, you're, throw that. It feels thing. like you're getting a little Harrison I, version. I, I am. I, I, I'm totally. That's good. Um, I, I am just thinking. Well, what what can you do? Is the point. That's what that comes well, out. Right. Of. Right. I, I think what we what you need to do is we need to find some way to advantage the pitchers again, so that they don't need to be. Because I think at the youth level. That's going to come from a change at the major league level because youth pitchers youth. 
young pitchers are always going to try and throw as hard as they can because that's what you want to do as a pitcher. Even, even though when you think about the fact that them going for maximum velocity, they don't, A, their bodies are not finished growing. Right. Now, B, think, they don't even know what they're doing. I think <laughs> not, not encouraging coaches to not do arm strengthening stuff in that fashion is something. We can't stop players from doing it on their own. But not having high school programs doing stuff like weighted ball throwing against a wall, I think, is a totally viable idea. That the weighted ball thing is taking a lot of heat right now. It's right. interesting you say that. Well, mostly just because it's a, pu- it's a very easy thing for anybody to understand. You can immediately see how, okay, yeah, if you were just throwing weighted balls against a wall, that is going to really strengthen your arm and allow you to throw a baseball harder. So it's a very easy example, I think. Uh, one of the other things, and uh, you remember our friend Dave Moriarty, who mm-hmm. would always talk about long tossing. Like, that's something that... That generation, you know, boomers and, and, and old pitchers did a lot of long tossing in the outfield to strengthen their arm, but they also didn't throw balls to the wall as hard as they could no, ever cause, cause, uh, on the mound. No, no, so you it, were, I don't think it's a related long to- and But in long tossing, also, you were not throwing maximum that's velocity. Right, that's the point. It was I mean, more about, like, trying to air the, the ball arm out, stretch and, the and arm and get out. loose and right. right. So I think I think long tossing has a place, but I don't think it's a panacea for, for solving no, the problem. No, of, I don't, uh, I don't uh, think you'd be like, oh, well, if we just eliminate weighted ball tossing, and just have them do long tossing instead, they'll be fine. So, so, and and the averages in Major League, as much as they were up last year, um, it, you know, the hitting was better. It wasn't that much better. I think the average in Major League was like two forty nine for. So we, we're not at a point where the hitting is so good. It's not that good, right? But it's catching up already against this pitching. Guys are throwing this hard. It's already getting to two fifty. What happens when the league average starts creeping higher? Well, that's because everybody's injured. Now you're facing a guy who wasn't supposed to be pitching. It's but, just some guy who was in the minor leagues who's now in the major league. All of a sudden, they can hit that guy. Yeah, I, I, I guess facing Shane Bieber's replacement isn't as scary as facing right. Shane Bieber. Right, right. So, uh, you know, so so what can you do? And so why, why don't you say what you well, I was going to say is. In 1969, we lowered the mound because the pitchers had too much of an 15 advantage. 15 to 10 inches. Why don't we ra- We don't have to raise it the full 15, but what go if to we 12? go to 12, go to 13? I'm just saying that might give pitchers the ability to be able to uh, changing the plane that the ball is coming in on. Like make it so that the pitchers don't have to chase velocity as much and they can focus on more control-based stuff because they have the advantage of the better angle. You talk about the angle, because I, I don't know that everybody uh, understands. Right, right. The difference of throwing off a 15-inch mound compared to a 10-inch mound is very different. The plane that the ball is going to be coming in at, it's going to be much more steeping down towards the hitter rather than it being much more flat and level. So that's going to aid not only your fastball, but your off-speed but stuff too, especially I have to imagine curveballs because curveball breaks are going to be so much sharper off of a taller mound because they're going to be able to break more so i imagine you you would and the sweeper probably loses some of its effectiveness because it's not as on a flat plane where it's as valuable well, you can have more downward motion right. on that because of the of the higher mound. so i, I think it's an interesting idea I, I, right the, the only problem is is that i don't know if it would do enough like i don't know if like the pitchers would just be oh well now we have a higher mound and i can throw 98 yeah, I, I look. It, it is no. There's no question that Rod Manfred and the MLB, you know, brass are, are willing to try try stuff. So it would be an interesting thing to test right. at the minor league level or and someplace see. to see the does problem, it have the an impact. Is, 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 how do you have it have an impact when the pl- the pitchers are still trained right now to chase velocity and such? You can't, a, no, no, that's right. There's nothing so you can do you, about you, that. You're you, you going to get messy results for a little bit. Right. You're going to have to live with things the way they are. And, right. And we, we still aren't going to be have a, a cor- have a correlation um, between the pitch clock and, and, and that, you know, that's what's really behind all this because there's no way it doesn't... There's Exactly. There's no evidence for that right now. You know, it sure feels like it would make that. So, and, and you know, pitchers are, are going to, at the major league level, should, should be able to do, you know, whatever they can. This is their professionals. These are grown, you know, men that can make their own decisions. It's the youth baseball aspect. And remember when you were a kid pitching, I think you still came in a time where dads like me might have said, I don't want you to throw a curveball for a while and until you're, you've finished growing. That was that was standard for years. Yeah, right? I don't think you let me throw a curveball until I was at a Little League. So, so and, and when you see Little League uh, World Series games and stuff like that, all they throw are curveballs, and they're wicked curveballs because they're only, like, you know, 46 feet away or something like that. I think so, things are snapping all over the And these place. kids, you know, some of these kids are at 12 years old. They're, like, 6 foot 1 and 12 years old throwing, you know, what would the equivalent of a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. But the curveballs then, so all I'm thinking about when I'm watching these kids throwing, going, 
all those curveballs, and he hasn't finished growing yet or maturing, and that puts torque on the elbow, like you were saying. And I don't really see too many little league pitchers throw sliders, um, and and that's hopefully a good thing. Um, but I think that that's the we have to go there first and talk about how we're going to train these kids so they can maybe build up also their arms in a way that will allow them to sustain that because it's a natural in the first place to throw a baseball the ba- as hard as you can. Right. I think I think people don't realize throwing a baseball is not a natural motion in just about any capacity. It's one of the most unnatural things you can do. Throwing a baseball 99 miles an hour is very unnatural. So it's not surprising that we're straining the bodies when we're getting it to do things that it was really never meant to do. And it's more elbows than shoulders, mm-hmm. but we do have shoulder issues too. And on uh, Kodai Senga of the Mets has got a shoulder problem that anytime you have a shoulder injury with a pitcher, you're really nervous because you just don't know how that's going to be repaired or if it's right. if sometimes it can be they can come back from that really quickly. Sometimes it just lingers and they just never. But for recover years, well. like you said to start, you know, the pitchers that got Tommy John surgery, um, you know, it was almost a relief. When you got that, right? Okay, I got the surgery. I'm done. Now I can do my rehab, and now I can come back, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. And you have so to worry about that's, it now. That's, that's not the case. And, and it's interesting when we mentioned James Andrews, who, who finally retired, um, and I think he was in his 80s when he retired. Al Leiter was one of those guys to say he thinks that Andrews should be one of those guys who goes to the Hall of Fame. And I, For the and contribution I, to the game? And I, Hard to ignore I it. think, And Frank Job was the guy who did it first, but I, I, know, I think there are a few surgeons. I mean, James Andrews has done so many surgeries on so many major league right. pitchers he is like the major league yeah, concierge the, the, the pitcher whisperer so um yeah i i i you know pitchers in high school are now regularly throw over 90 miles an hour right and, the problem is pitchers in high school are also regularly getting tommy john and he, that's the problem yeah yeah and and it's it I don't, I don't know how you put that genie if you will back in the bottle I, you know, short of doing some wacky stuff, and like, I don't like know penalizing and, guys and, for and going too hard, if, and it's not something major league. It's not major league's job to. But major league obviously has a stake in this, right, so but it is not. They can't, but they can't. They can't regulate they little can't league. They can't regulate high school, high school baseball, baseball or college baseball. They're not part of any of that. So but they could take some of the vast riches that they have and put into some developmental programs at at lower lower echelons and try to help these people find out what's the best way to treat these pitchers. And major league baseball has plenty of money to do that. Um, I've never seen them do that kind of a thing, but it would be it would be a step Maybe in the right be a direction. Maybe benefit to the, you know baseball as a whole. So uh, yeah, I um, yeah, chasing velocity. That's not going to stop. No, um, because you know everybody wants that. You know th- th- to watch that pitcher throw 106 miles an hour like a Roldis Chapman. Uh, but if he can't ever pitch again, all of a sudden you have a bunch of guys throwing under 100 because no one can throw that. No, nobody's anymore. left. So uh, I don't. Nah, I, I don't know what the solution is. Uh, I like your thought of testing something else. So mm-hmm. maybe maybe that'll be something we can do.